In this video, we will learn how to create a resource in Next.js and how to uh, give access of model to a particular resource. So Next comes with a uh, Next CLI. Uh, you know, uh, if you have it installed before you work with Next.js project. So if you click Next Help, it will give you certain set of commands like this. Uh, you can see there are certain commands. Next new is used to uh, create a new project since we are already uh, using a repository so we didn't we didn't do this uh, the most important thing that I want to show you is nest uh, generate and it will help you generate whether create code for whatever you want to generate it for right so right now uh, you can create a controller a service you know stuff like that uh, but you can also choose to create an entire CRUD resource you know so you don't have to do anything and everything manually so if I do something like nest g resource and name it user uh, it will ask me what kind of resource i want to create for example uh, rest api graphql there are two types of graphql here uh, and the third one is i think microservices so let it uh, load and, and you will see the options see rest api yeah there is websockets as well so i want rest api i would uh, press enter would you like to generate current entry points i would say yes press y and hit enter and it will now create all of those files you can see if you come to the source this user directory is created and here services service spec controller controller spec spec file is for testing uh, these all files are created so similarly user module is also created like this where all of these things are registered you know controller as well as service and most importantly you know whenever you create a new module you have to register it into app module and that is also registered here as well. So hit save so that the predator problem is resolved. See, it is just some sort of a predator problem. I would say fix it so that it can to the next line. And this is perfectly fixed. So DTO means uh, data transfer objects, you know, it defines how your you know request should be look like you know how the your request should look like. So DTO can be used for transformation as well as validation purpose in NestJS. So we don't need entities because we are not working with type ORM or any other sort of thing. So let me just delete that part. Now, how about I go here and I create a schema. So let's create a schema folder. Uh, you know the short trick is you uh, do something like this, user.schema.ts. If I do schema slash, it will automatically create that folder for me and the file inside of it. So that is pretty much cool. To create a schema, uh, you would need to import some stuff like prop schema uh, schema factory from nest.js mongoose. Import document from mongoose and then define the schema something like this let github copilot do the work so i think it has defined it i don't want to extend this here so this is mostly uh, like you know a boilerplate code i want this to be required uh, not username but rather email and i also want the password to be required as well like this so what is the error that i have done here mm -hmm. so if i do something like um quick fix to solve radio problems so it will fix those i think uh, i have messed up you know the control s button for automatically radio to activate so if i go here now um i can do you know uh, some sort of optional property as well you know these two are required so for for example option optional means some documents may have that property and some docu and some documents may not have that property so something like um first name string and prop last name string something like this and i guess I'd, i would have to keep going uh, these pre fixes and the next uh, step you have to do is you have to define the type of the document something like this and 
then the schema i think it is doing the job for me so this is kind of a uh, you know like a boilerplate code that you would have to do you know if you want to create a um, some other document uh, you know some other schema for example by the name of course you would name the class as, as course you would define all of your properties here the type whatever the type you want for example you could name it to number or all of the other schema types that we uh, learned in previous video it could be any of those types that you can define here and this is how you define the schema in a form of a class this decorator means that this particular class is a schema file and then you have imported uh, you have you know use schema factory to create a schema from the class which is by the name of the user and then you have exported this user schema so the reason we have exported all of this stuff is because uh, we would be importing it in other important files as well so what we are going to be doing now is creating some sort of relationship between this schema and our entire user module here and you know um, we would be doing this stuff in our imports just like we did in our main application module so something like we have to import um, mongoose module obviously and then we have to import user schema that we just created user and user schema from the file right now we have to do something like this perfect so it should be imports okay hit save now what we have done so far is we have created a schema called user schema and we have created a link between user schema and user module so we are saying that register this the module by the name of user in this user module right so that is what we have done so that we can use the user module uh, user model of our database in this particular module okay so we would be doing this with the with the help of injection so dependency injection is a very um, broad topic in nsjs it simply means that uh, there are certain objects which are already resolved and they are currently inside ioc container of nsjs and they are ready to be used by any other uh, you know controller which intends to use them controller or service or whatever uh, whatever the thing that wants to use this okay thank you for watching